very warm welcome to all you beautiful learners to an academy which is india's largest online learning platform the topic that we are going to do today is the old clock shop from your book uh, honeycomb and this is chapter number 4 welcome to my class dear learners my name is sweksha sahai and i am your english educator it is my passion to teach and continue to learn english apart from english i also know two other foreign languages which are french and spanish you can say that i'm very passionate about languages so that was a little bit about me and you can always ace your school with an academy and now the an academy's plus subscription is come to, coming to you at a flat 10% discount if you use my code sws10 with that let's begin with your chapter the old clock shop so the background of the story is that it's christmas eve and closing time for all the shops ray's old clock shop is still open two shoppers call at his at this shop very at very at a very late hour so christmas eve had arrived as last minute shoppers were going home a thick white sheet of snow lay over salt lake city usa so they are describing the scene to you what the christmas scene looks like there is a thin sheet of snow all over the country in the usa and the salt lake city is no different yet the lights were still burning in the old clock shop as ray its old deaf owner worked on a clock he had sold that day so ray who is a hard working man was still working in his shop on a clock which he had sold on that very day also the point that one should note is that ray is deaf having finished his work ray stood up and was on his way back room when a cold rush of air from the front door hit the back of his neck so what happens in cold temperatures whenever the door is opened or closed there is a rush of cold air that gets inside so that's exactly what happened when ray was working he turned to meet a last minute shopper but his old wise eyes told him that this was not a shopper he saw two men one in his 20s the other close to 50 so there were two visitors in his shop the um, the first one was in his 20s and the other one was close to 50 the younger man remained at the door the older man approached the counter and uh, with no sign of friendliness in his eyes ray was able to hide his growing fear as he slowly pushed a notepad and a pencil across the counter so what happened was as ray was a very experienced man so he remained calm in this situation though he knew that these two people were no ordinary shoppers he smiled at the unfriendly face then pointed to his ears and shook his head from side to side a quick look of surprise changed the man's face as he studied the notepad then he turned and said something to his friend so what happened what happened here uh ray who uh, was deaf of course he did not know any other way to treat the customers apart from asking them to write their wishes on a notepad so he did the same thing with this uh, visitor or the shopper as well and i think that this uh, ray's deafness ray's deafness changed something in the man's behavior or in the man's attitude he did not look as unfriendly as he was in the beginning and he said something to his friend who was at the door who was guarding the door rather so ray used the chance to look closely at the man paying attention to the shape of a gun and a restless hand in the man's right coat pocket so there was definitely a gun and these two were robbers anger boiled within him but it was kept down by an inner voice that said be still he wrote on the notepad may i help you so ray behaved as he would behave with any other customer he he wrote on the notepad may i help you despite of knowing that those men were uh, did not have good intentions and in fact they had a gun with them with which he could harm them but ray being the man that he was he remained calm even in this situation and tried to face it 
a cruel mocking smile they both understood why he was there why his friend remained at the door they looked like men who were down on their luck and were now ready to try something they would later be sorry about so to be down on um, your luck means nothing is working out for you so what happens when nothing work uh, nothing works out for a man he becomes desperate and when he becomes desperate he may rob or steal or kill people so the same thing had happened with these two men they seemed like their luck was down and now they were going to do something that they would regret or later be sorry about the clock ticked on ray calmly wrote another message have you come to pick up a clock or a watch so now what did ray do ray knew that these two did not have any money okay so very um, i would say in a very wise way okay he wrote on a piece of paper are you here to pick up a, a clock or a watch then he pointed out to the loan board filled with the hanging clocks and pocket watches so he gave them a hint that if they would give him uh, their watches probably he could loan him some money in this way he was trying to save himself because he was a wise man it he was not a pawn broker but at the same time couldn't say no to the needy people who placed their old watches or clocks before him for anything that could that they could get he loaned more than he should they would be there when the owners wanted to get them back at the same price as he paid with no interest so the good thing about ray was he never charged any interest to the needy and the clock or the watch would always remain in his shop if someone wanted to pick them back then the older man seemed to feel a little easier took out his hand from his pocket and quickly looked at the watch on his wrist how much will you give me for this the man wrote ray noticed a little shame on uh, in the gray eyes looking at him the watch was nothing special and yet had great powers it was something to exchange a way out of a bad situation knowing that uh, knowing that great need had brought the man to his shop in the first place ray asked how much do you need for it the reply came back on the notepad whatever it's worth so the man did not quote any amount he just said whatever you think that this watch is worth you can give me that much ray reached out into his cash box and pulled out a 50 dollar note and passed it into the man's hand as they shook hands ray looked into the man's eyes they seemed to say thank you they both knew the man the watch wasn't worth that much before turning to leave the man wrote i will be back to pick up pick this up as soon as i can merry christmas the little story ended on half an hour uh, on the half hour with the clock striking all together the time pieces had been looking on silently all the while rang out the time with such feeling that even ray thought he could hear them their sweet musical message was filled with hope the timeless message of peace on earth goodwill towards all was felt by the three men who stood in the clock shop so what happened it was all because of ray's wisdom and kindness that he saved all three of them they all the three of them could have been a very bad situation but ray understood even though he was deaf and did not really hear them ray understood the thing that he could do in this situation of course this happened because of his experience and the kindness that he had he understood that the men were out of luck and they needed all they needed was some money and he offered them he saved himself from being a victim and he saved both the men from becoming criminals all in the same go so this was a story about ray's kindness and his wisdom we will do the question answers in the next slides what made ray think the visitor was not really a shopper ray's experience as a shopkeeper told him that they were not shoppers why do you think he had come to the shop in my opinion he had come to the shop to rob it and we come to understand this when we uh, when we see that ray finds out that there is a 
uh, gun in their pocket. How did Ray communicate with them? Ray communicated with them using a notepad as he was deaf. The next question, why do you think the man said to his friend, who, what do you think the man said to his friend who was waiting outside? I think the man communicated about the change of plan to his friend as he did not want to rob a ray because he was deaf. Ray was not a pawnbroker. Why do you think he lent money to people in exchange for watches? Ray lent money to people in exchange of watches because he was aware of their needs and had a kind heart. So Ray always gave people a little more than the watches were worth. It is because Ray knew that people needed money and Ray had a kind heart. The watch uh, was nothing special yet had great powers. In what sense did it have great powers? The watch had great powers in the sense that it could save those men from committing a crime and it could save Ray from becoming a victim. So this was the great exchange power of the watch. Do you think the man would ever come back to pick up his watch? I think in my opinion, uh, maybe the man, the both the men were touched by the kindness of Ray and they may come back to pay him a little more than Ray lent him and they would take his watch, they would take their watch back. When did the unfriendly face of the visitor turn truly friendly? The unfriendly face of the visitor became truly friendly when Ray offered $50 for his watch which wasn't really expensive. So this was a kind gesture because of which the man became really friendly towards Ray. That brings us to the end of this chapter. But let's look at the amazing features of the Unacademy's Plus subscription. You get to learn in live classes from top educators of India. There's regular doubt clearing and answer writing sessions. There's exhaustive coverage of your entire syllabus. You get study material in PDF format. There's mentorship and guidance, practice tests, live test series, batch courses, and a lot more. The plus subscription pricing is right now on your screen and you can always get a 10% discount with my code SWS10. And now let's look at Unacademy's iconic subscription features which has all the other benefit of the plus subscription but there is a lot more in this one. So you get personal mentorship, you get live doubt solving. Personal mentorship means you will be given a mentor who will especially be looking after your needs. There is live doubt solving, which means you get the answer to all your doubts there and then. There is a weekly report. Your parents get to connect with us and know about your progress. There is also a study planner and all the benefits of the Unacademy's Plus subscription. The pricing for the Iconic subscription is right now on your screen and you can get a flat 10% discount if you use my code SWS10. So that brings us to the end of this class but do like share and subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that you never ever miss a class from us this is all that i have for you today but i will see you very soon with the next chapter thanks a lot for watching and have a great day ahead bye bye